Cheech with fly fish food, and here we have Skill Builder 16. This means there's 16 weeks worth of Skill Builders before this. Subscribe if you haven't. We're going to talk about coloring hackle. We're going to talk about twisting hackle. And we're going to talk about how to make hackle more durable than you've ever seen it. This is a cool skill builder because this is something that I've, I've done in the past when I'm out of one certain color of hackle. But I'm going to show you how to do a parachute atoms just with grizzly or grizzly variant like I have. Nothing wrong with these grizzly variants. Look how nice that one is. Anyway, I have taken out a feather that I want to put in this fly. And it's just pretty much grizzly. And I'm going to preen out the feathers just like this there are some of them that always try to join the dark side we'll just leave them stay over there all right so then I'm going to take a piece of paper just as a backing or if you're tying on your buddy's desk just do it right on the desk and I'm going to take half of this hackle and I'm going to color it all brown um, I probably should have got the fat sharpie. Do it a lot faster. But I'm just going to get all the, f the fibers on that one side. And as you can see against the paper, now I have brown highlights on my uh, hackle. Just like it's half brown, half grizzly. And it's important to do that. I like to tie those so that the shiny side of the hackle is down. So make sure you're coloring the side of the hackle that you want to use or just do both sides and be safe. All right, let's bring this vise over here and we'll tie this in and see how it looks. So here I have a parachute-ish type fly. I do have, you know, grizzly hackle fibers for the tail, dubbing body, so this is kind of like an atom. So I'm just going to trim, trim the stem. Um, we have other skill builders on how to tie parachutes, so I'm just going to kind of go quickly here. And we're just going to do the completed fly to, to show you and give you an idea of what this really looks like. Um, I always trim off, and even when you're doing a demo, you should, uh, you should dub a thorax on these uh, parachutes. It kind of helps keep the hackle propped up how it should be. Okay, so I'm just uh, just creating a little tiny dubbing noodle, fast and dirty, since this isn't even part of this skill builder. Alright, so here we have our hackle. It's going to be finished by wrapping it around the hooks, or the, the, the parachute post. So if I did this right, we ought to be able just to wrap it and just one turn under the previous. And the way that I like to tie these off is just with my thread on the post. Um, we do have a video on that as well. One little hater down there that didn't want to get out of there. All right. This is how I whip finish my parachutes. You probably have seen that by now. But we're just going to turn this upside down now so you can see the color profile of the hackle. So see, we have nice amounts of brown on that hackle. And essentially, we have a parachute atoms with one hackle. Oh, you know what? Guess what? Sorry, people. Now we do. Anyway, kind of a cool, fun technique to play with. This is a cool tool. We've had it for, I don't know, about a year in the shop. And it doesn't look like anything that cool. But I've done some flies with it, and, and it's, it's awesome what this little thing can do. It's called the Cotterelli Hackle Twister, Brigham tells me. Awesome. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put those two pieces of CDC right on top of each other. And I'm just going to take this. What happens with this, let me, let me see if I can show this, maybe with a piece of paper. So 
from a top view, this has three prongs coming out. So it's designed to pinch and grab stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the stem of those feathers and rest them. I rest them on my finger and I just poke that straight through and it will grab onto the tips and you just feed the tips down into this hackle twister. And I'm going to make sure that my first wrap, these, the tops of the feather kind of go under the rest of them and then I'm just going to wrap that forward and it will wrap some uh, up high, some down low. And what you're going to do now is you can take all of that CDC, preen it forward, and you're going to pull it off the tool now. Okay? So all this junk goes away. That's just stem and waste. And now you've pretty much, and I, I, I probably should have made the CDC stay one direction, but as you can see, now you've got a really dense little clump of CDC that's perfectly modeled between the two colors that I chose. Okay, That's an awesome little technique we've been playing with. I use it mostly with marabou. So check this out. This is a cool, cool way to make like a, a dual color tail on a woolly bugger. So you're going to do that same thing. But I'm going to poke that through here just like we did with the CDC and I'll get that started. I should be able just to rotate this and go upward and it's just gonna splay all that, that marabou out into a big old mess, okay? In fact, I lost hold of that last piece of marabou, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna pin that against the stem, just like yay, and then I'm gonna take all those fibers and brush them out, okay? So, once I'm here, I'm going to pull those all off. And this is all that stem and waste. We're going to get rid of that. And now I've got a really cool marabou tail using pretty much all the marabou off of those fibers. Now, if you were to tie this in, there's a big old clump of gnarliness here. So, get in here and clean up some of the tips with your fingernail, just like this. And if you can get a bunch of that fluff out of there, which works great as dubbing, by the way, you can have a much slimmer tie-in point for all of that marabou. So anyway, that's the Cotterelli Hackle Twister. I use it mostly with CDC and marabou, but it makes a really cool effect on your flies. This is a really cool technique we're going to show you to make a traditional style hackle uh, more durable. So. I just have a size 14 hook in the vise. I've got bright thread so you can see what's going on and I just have a, a hundred pack. This tends to work best with saddle hackles but it will work with anything. So I'll just tie this in like we normally would. Brigham's made me redo this video like eight times. So I gotta make sure that my thread's still good. All right, here we are, we're in. So I just tie in the stem and I'm gonna drop my thread back behind the tying point and let it hang here. And for demo purposes, I'm going to throw in a little half hitch and just move my thread out of the way. No one wants to watch that swang all around. So now the next step is I'm going to take my hackle and I'm going to start wrapping that forward in leaving a little bit of room between each turn. So there we have it. You can see the thread in between each turn of hackle. And now I'm just going to take that hackle and then wind it back the other way. Now, a lot of you know traditionally dry to dry fly attractor patterns specifically call for two pieces of hackle to make it thick enough. So as you can see, as I I wrapped it forward and now back, and that is a nice thick piece of hackle. Some of them got a little squirrely on us in the front, but we can just push those back, and then we'll wrap our thread up and, and tie those down. But essentially. Um, once you have it here, you're going to take your thread and you can use nano silk for this application. It works really well. And I'm just going to tie that off and I'm going to do two real tight wraps back here. And that's tied down. And then I'm going to take my thread all the way through the hackle and that's going to bind it down and make it even more durable and finish at the head. And as you can see, I can make a little pronounced head. It's going to make, make your friends think you're the cleanest tire ever because it looks like I've tied down hackle with like four turns of thread at the front of the fly. 
What you do now is you just get rid of that piece, yeet that out of there, get those haters out of here, go hate on someone else's fly. This is clean fly zone. So anyway, there you have it. That is a really good way to tie uh, a, a very durable hackle on a traditionally hackled fly. I use it on the Grumpy Frumpy and the Bionic Ant most of all. So if you like these techniques, make sure that you like and subscribe all of our stuff. Um, if you subscribe, we come out with these videos every single week. Share them with your friends. You know, you have one buddy who ties atrocious woolly bugger tails. Share this video with them. Make their lives a lot happier.